Hello everyone. Today I'm going to try to help you walk you through the basic things you need for an aquascape. To make it a bit easier for you, we're going to have a more basic and a more advanced setup as an example. To keep it easier to keep track of all this stuff, we've marked the basic setup with an orange foil and the advanced setup with a blue foil. So the aquariums don't come with these. This was just for the video. Nothing I say today is set in stone, okay? So there's a lot of crossover between the two sides of things, uh, but I thought that this is gonna be much simpler for you to understand the minimum you need to start an aquascape and the top of the line solutions if you're really committed. And the decisions you're gonna make based on this video is really about your commitment. So I recommend the basic stuff for you if you want to get into aquascaping but you don't want to commit yourself in time, in money, in everything that comes with it. The advanced side is for you if you've already decided that you're full on into aquascaping and you want to make the best way possible and uh, you want to use all the resources available to you. So, things start with the aquarium itself. And here I have a float glass and here I have an optimized glass. Main difference is coloration. During the production process, iron is taken out of the glass in the optimized tanks. Because of this, the tint is a bit bluish, basically it's colorless, while float glass has a greenish tint to it. When you're starting out, this is basically an aesthetic difference, so optimized glass is nicer to look at, and it's very definitive when you see them side by side like this. When you see them, just one of them at home, uh, you don't notice it that much. The point where it actually becomes important is when you decide to apply to contests. All contests are based on photos that you send in and if you take your photos in a float tank, the greenish tint is going to be applied to all the plants and everything that's inside your aquarium. While if you do it with an OptiVite tank, there is no trickery with the, with the colors of the living things inside, so keep that in mind when you decide. Obviously, you need to put the tank somewhere, and there are two things you need to consider when deciding, the, well, three things, the placement of your tank. First of all, it can't be in a place where you get direct sunlight. That's obvious, if sunlight hits the aquarium, you get algae. Second thing is weight of the aquarium. And what we usually go for is liters doubled in kilograms. So, for a 60 liter aquarium, you need something that can easily hold 120 kilos. For a small tank, this can be your kitchen counter or your office desk. For a bigger tank, it needs to be a cabinet made for an aquarium. The third thing is, the aquarium always has to be perfectly in level. So, if, if it's just slightly out of alignment, there's pressure on the gluing itself, so the glass is going to come off eventually. It might be weeks, or months, or years, but if it's not on level, it's gonna happen. To make things a bit easier with leveling, you need to put something in between your furniture and the aquarium itself. And this is where beds and mats come into play. Now, this is really not about basic or an advanced setup. This is about your floors. When you have hard flooring, like tiles, like we have in here, Obviously, as you move around your aquarium and you move around the cabinet the aquarium is on, the tank itself won't really move. In these cases, you're perfectly fine with these thin, uh, simple pads. But if you have wooden floors, which slightly move when you walk around, you need to get rid of that movement in between the furniture and the aquarium. And for that, we have these mats, which are much more elastic and uh, much thicker than the simple pads. So these are interchangeable between the aquariums. It doesn't reflect the advancement of the aquarium itself. It's just to make sure that your tank is safe for the coming years. Now that you've found the perfect place for your aquarium and it's all set up, we need to start with the technical equipment. And the soul of any aquascape is filtration. So, I have some filters. For the basic setup, uh, I've actually prepared an external filter and an internal filter. 
Now, in any case, not depending on the aquarium size, we always prefer external filters. But obviously, it's, you are fine with a smaller one like this. Obviously, by, even by the box, you can see a big size difference between the two filters, even though the aquarium is the same. On a basic setup where you have less light, less plants, you're perfectly fine with a smaller filter with less media in it. The internal filter is here because in some cases you simply can't fit an external filter. You don't have the space to hold it because it needs to be underneath the aquarium and if this is on your office desk then probably you can't fit an external filter underneath that. Luckily, now there are some filters, internal filters on the market that you can actually use with biological media in them. In the olden days, internal filters came with a sponge. Still, most of them come with a sponge, but at least there is space for biological media to fit into them. With an external filter, they usually come with some biomedia applied. You can elevate that with more biomedia added and replace some of the sponges that come with the filter. But you can start off with a filter as is in most cases. On the advanced side, I have what a lot of people would consider a huge filter compared to this aquarium size. Uh, but actually, this is our go-to option for a 60p here in the showroom. This is a 350. Whenever you see the numbers at the end of the filter names, it usually refers to what the manufacturer recommends as the biggest aquarium for that filter. So I have a filter in a 60p that by Eheim standards belongs to a 350 litre aquarium. These are marketing numbers, don't trust them for a second, especially not for aquascaping. If you have a much higher biological load on our aquariums than a normal fish tank would have, so we use bigger filters and it's really not about the flow of the filter, although we usually say as a basic rule that you need your water to be turned around 10 times an hour by your filter, it's a good starting point to, as a reference to choose a filter, but the real reason behind that number is that we know how much filter media capacity is behind that flow rate. It's much more important to have sufficient amount of biological media. And in this case, the 350 comes with three baskets, and one of them is already filled with Eheim Substrate Pro, which is a biological media but the other two is filled with stuff that we usually replace for aquascaping. That's where, again, the matrix comes in. Two liters would make this full of biomedia with only a pre-filter sponge and a fine filter mesh on the out outgoing side of the filter. And also part of filtration is chemical filtration. The sea purigen, we have it in all of our aquariums. That's what makes the water crystal clear all the time, especially if you have something that would make that water colored like ironwood that makes the water brown with pyrogen you can take that coloration out of your water so it's crystal clear all the time now in both cases you can easily use the factory hoses and in and outlets that come with the filters themselves but on advanced setups we usually replace the in and out flows with either acrylic or glass options and mainly because of this thing which is called a lily pipe First of all, it's glass, it's much nicer to look at. But the actual shape of a lily pipe, it helps us once we start adding CO2 into our tanks. And on the advanced setup, we usually do that. On a basic setup, you won't have that. So you're perfectly fine for as long as you want with your simple in and out flows. If you want to run a high tech setup, you need this to prevent rushing out the CO2 from the water itself. If you would use the spray bar that comes with the filter itself, what it does is it, it, you need surface movement to have some air circulation between the water and your air in the room. Now the spray bar's movement, what it makes on the surface, it actually rushes out CO2. The movement is too strong. With a lily pipe, what it does is a small swirl on top of it by the water, so it sucks in air without rushing out any CO2 that you just dissolved. So that's where it comes in, and yeah, that's just much nicer to look at. All I've said so far applies to any kind of aquarium. You, you need this stuff to make it work properly and not just scrape off algae all the time. But what comes now is, especially for aquascaping, or it's much more important in aquascaping, and that's lighting. So here I have two Chihiro slides 
on the basic setup I have an A series. On the other side I have a Cheers WRGB, the middle ground one because there's a Slim which is less powerful and a Pro which is more powerful. But we have a video about lights in very, 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 very much detail on the channel. For a more basic setup, you don't need as powerful lighting as you would for a high-tech setup. Obviously, this comes with limitation uh, for plants, but obviously for a basic setup, you would choose plants that don't need as much light, don't need CO2, don't need substrates, for example. We're gonna get into that later on. For a high-tech setup, you need powerful lighting because you need to provide lights throughout all of the water to the bottom for your carpeting plants, which are quite demanding and quite far away from the light itself. And also, you might want some intense red colors on your stem plant, and that also comes from lighting itself, because the red coloration of plants is basically the same effect what you get when you forget yourself out in the sun and your skin gets burned. This is a protective mechanism of the plant to turn red to protect itself against burning by the light. So for that you need lots of light and a WRGB like this is perfectly enough. For most cases you can go over the top, there are levels above this, uh, but you're probably gonna dim them down anyway. You might even need to dim this down on everyday usage as well, but that's a good thing that these lights are controllable so you can set them to a certain level. But this one, it's not gonna be too much for a more simple setup, but you don't get as much flexibility. And this is where you can start evolving your tank. So if you start out with a more basic setup and you decide that, okay, now I'm fully in it. I want to get more options with plants and so on. You can keep your tank, you can keep your filter, you can add a more powerful light as a first step, for example. With more powerful lighting comes the need for CO2. And we've just put this box here, but actually CO2 is much more than this. This is just a diffuser that would actually get the CO2 inside your tank. But obviously you would need a cylinder pressure regulator, solenoid valve, and a lot more stuff for running a CO2 system. Now, CO2 can come into play for two different reasons. Lighting, above a certain amount of light, you need CO2 to balance it out. Otherwise, you just get algae. Second reason, some plants can't survive without added CO2. The CO2 that's in the water is simply not enough for them. Good example is most of carpeting plants. Some can survive without CO2, but they're never gonna develop into full carpet. And some simply die without CO2, like Hemianthus cuba, for example. Um, that was one of the first plants that, that CO2 was needed to get into an aquarium. Also, it's important to know that adding CO2 on a tank that only has plants that don't need it, and has a light that doesn't need it to be balanced out, adding CO2 can be helpful. Your plant's gonna look much nicer. So this is the second thing that you can start your aquascaping evolution. If you have a basic setup, you can add a CO2 system on it before anything else. And you're gonna see improvement on the health of your plants and the health of the whole aquarium and the balance of your aquarium. Now that we have all of our technical equipment, we need to get ready to make our first hardscape and the first thing you need is soil. When I say soil you need a basic layer for your aquascape. Now here in both cases I have a substrate layer and something to cover it with. In the advanced case it's ADA power sand which is sort of like a biological filter media and when you top it off with your active soil like Amazonia or any good quality active soil it keeps the bottom of your tank filtered, basically. It provides sufficient flow in the base of your aquarium, which is very important underneath active soils. In a basic setup, you can get away without any substrate, or if you want to use, because you're choosing plants that need it, then you can get some more simple, you don't need uh, such high level substrates in that. The main point is because either on its own or on top of the substrate, you're gonna use some inert soil. In this case, gravel, or it could be sand, whatever you like. This is more about looks. 
Now, how to decide if you need substrate or not? Um, if you want plants that are actually planted, then you probably need some substrate. So, cryptocorine types, valisnerias, in the back of the tank you can have some Echinodorus types or if you want some color then Ludwigias are perfectly fine. Uh, a Ludwigia palustis red would be nice and red under a light like this for example, but it definitely needs some nutrients through its roots, so you need uh, a substrate layer. Another option is to don't get any plants that need planting and go with epiphytes only. In this case you would have a big piece of wood in the middle of your tank and attach your plants onto it. Anubias types, Putzflanders, Microsorums, they are very very nice plants that don't really demand anything from you to work nicely. A lot of people think that in a setup like this you can't make a nice aquarium because you can't have all the nice plants. Even if you limit yourself in plant choice it can be a really nice aquarium. I think a good example is my discus tank which has easy plants in it. Basically anything you see in there would survive in a setup like this with low light, without CO2 and I think I can say that it's nice. As soon as we get into the more demanding plants, uh, carpeting plants, any small plants with so small root systems or any plants that have very very high uh, demand for nutrients like quick stem plants in addition to the substrate, you need an active soil as well. This makes it much easier for the plants to root, especially the ones that have very thin and very small roots. And also it helps your water be balanced out and buffered throughout its lifetime. So what I mean by this is if you have an active soil and you make a water change, in a case of an inert soil, you could have a quick pH drop, for example, or a pH increase. Uh, with an act active soil, you won't have that. But if you don't do CO2, the chance of that is much less. So again, for basic setup, it's perfectly fine to use an inner soil. In case of what hardscape you use and what plants or the amount of plants that you choose, obviously there might be a difference between a basic and advanced setup based on budget mainly, but it shouldn't really limit the aquascape itself. So you can do a basic setup with 20 kilos of rocks and it will look nice uh, with easy plants and you can make a high-tech setup with just a piece of iron wood and lots of high demanding plants. Generally for a 60p like this and obviously you can count this for bigger aquariums for a 60p like this I would say minimum amount of plants to start with is six to eight pots and there's no maximum. So usually when I build a 60p, I start with anywhere between 15 to 30 plants. It depends on how much hardscape I have, so how much space I have for plants and how many different types of plants I want to use. But that sort of quantity is what you should expect for a high-tech setup. The amount of plants is important to get your tank in balance much quicker because the, the sudden growth of plants when you in, put them in your aquarium it takes up all the excess nutrients that otherwise would just uh, stay in your aquarium and start growing algae for you. So, big amount of plants, very important. But first, you need something to plant and trim them with. So, you need tweezers and scissors. And in here there are lots and lots of different quality. And this is not really about being basic or advanced. You can start your first high-tech aquascape with simpler tools, they're going to be perfectly fine. Uh, or obviously you can start a basic setup with high-end tools, but that's not expected. This is for example a DOA tweezer and uh, scissor, which is higher than middle level. And these are Chihiro's tweezers and scissors, which are perfectly fine to do the job. These come into play, the quality of these, when you spend a lot of time with your aquascape. If you plant regularly, if you trim your plants regularly or very often, then it starts to count and obviously with a bigger tank as well. The better your tools are, the easier the job is. High-end tools are lighter for example, so if you need to work with them for hours it's much better uh, for your hand. And also, they're just usually the scissors are sharper, the pincets are stronger, so you can work quicker. That's about it. 
Now this is all the stuff that you definitely need to start your first aquascape. Obviously, there are a lot of things that you need to get later on, depending on where you are in the hobby. You're gonna need a surface skimmer, you're gonna need more tools, you're gonna need fish, uh, and yeah, lots of stuff that come along as you progress in this beautiful hobby. I hope that this guide helps you out starting out. Again, it's very important that none of this is set in stone. These are advices. There are a lot of things that are interchangeable between the two setups. There are a lot of things that you can buy from this bunch, even if you're starting a basic setup. There are some things that you can get away with in a high tech from the basic setup. And obviously there is a big evolution in between the two. And for most of us, that's also part of the hobby starting from a simpler setup and getting onto the high tech level step by step. It's just very important to keep those steps in the right order. If by the end of this video, you finally know what you want to buy for your first setup and you are located in Europe, you can actually order them from us to check out the Green Aqua website for more details. Also, from all the stuff that I've talked about today, we have detailed videos about. So you can find a separate video about lighting, you can find videos about filtration, uh, soils and substrates, everything. So check out the rest of the channel and see you next time. Goodbye.